It's always fun to catch up with the great Derek Johnson, even better when we can say future college football Hall of Famer Derek Johnson. You heard the news recently, you're going into the Hall of Fame. What does that mean to you? It, it means the world. It means the world. You know what? Uh, uh, you, when, you, when you come to the University of Texas, you, you try to, you know, you take it day by day. You're trying to be the best freshman. You're trying to, you know, and so on, junior, senior, and you leave and you look back over your career and you say, man, one day, you know, one day maybe, you know, when uh, the NFL life is over, then maybe I can say I'm a Hall of Famer. And I tell you what, uh, uh, that was a dream come true, especially when I got that ball sent to my house and I opened it up and it said, Derek Johnson, congratulations, you're inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. That's awesome. And I'm sure there's such a long list of people that have been influential in your life and your career. But when you think about specifically your days at Texas, who are the first people that come to mind and how did they impact you? Oh man, uh, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so uh, e e elated uh, to uh, bring up my, my upbringing when it comes to my mom, um, being a school teacher for over 40 years. And you talk about, uh, she just wasn't a school teacher at, you know, at school, she, she brought it home. So uh, I was brought up the right way. Uh, she instilled a great values in us as kids. And uh, I have to give her credit, a lot of credit. My older brother who went to Baylor University he played in the NFL for four or five years, so I had advantage over a lot of kids because a lot of youngsters because I had somebody in my house that I was looking up to that, that set a great example for me to reach all my goals. And uh, I, I gotta I gotta mention uh, Coach Back Brown. I mean, <laughs> uh, you talk about somebody that mom that when I talk to him to this day, first thing he says is, "Hey, how's your mom doing?" You know, that lets you know how much of a father figure he was for us during our times here at the 40 Acres. And uh, it's just a long list. This is the ultimate team game. So when you get an award like that, a prestigious award like that, it's a freaking long list. We can stay here all day. I got so <laughs> many people, especially my teammates, obviously, yeah. uh, specifically defense alignment, because they plenty. set you up. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now, those, those guys that played with you and know you the best said it seemed like half the time you weren't even doing what you were supposed to do <laughs> oh, on plays yeah. like you, you were freelancing you were reading it was yeah. natural yeah. so what were those conversations like when coaches I imagine you know they like control are telling you you're supposed to be here yeah. but you're like but coach I made the play yeah. how does that go you know what it happened a bunch my freshman year after that I, I started uh, getting more responsibility and I knew how to play within the scheme but early I was just like hey I'm out here, I, I, I don't quite know what to do, so let me just figure it out and follow the ball. And a lot of times, the coaches did put me in position where I could have that freedom to freelance a little bit, and if I were to mess up, it wouldn't cost the team. But I, it's crazy, we, we're talking about that. I, I kind of look back over my stats, and I say, man, don't get me wrong, I made, I made a lot of tackles, but uh, my biggest trait was uh, tackles for loss. I mean, having 69 uh, from off the ball linebacker, what's that, 16, 17 a, a year. So it's one of those times where you say, man, if you want to follow DJ and what I did, tackles for loss is one of the big, big, big stats that you need to. And I would add to that, it's just the big plays overall. Because we've talked about this many times when we sit down. There's not a lot of defensive players that have a signature move. Mm -hmm, yeah. You had a signature move that led to nine forced fumbles your senior year. Yep. How did that develop? You know what we're talking. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you 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 talk about the big strip that I, you know the big punch out that yeah. I, that I do. I tell you that uh, everybody remembers that, and that's that's pretty awesome that people still remember that 20 years ago. It's one of those things where you got to really to make a habit of something. You got to practice. You got to practice throughout the year and all the time while you have practice, being conscious of you know securing the tackle and knocking the ball out now you got to be able to run you can't be a guy that you can't run because you got to yeah you got to actually track the ball carrier down secure the tackle and then punch it out because sometimes it always doesn't come out that era that you played in i think we were spoiled during that time just saying like this is what texas football should be but when you look at the history of texas football it's really dkr in the 1960s mac brown in the 2000s and those are by far the best decades and this program's trying to get back there yeah. what was it like being in that moment did you realize that it was that special I, honestly I did not I did not at that time you're just getting it uh, uh, you, you know the standard 
and, and you have enough guys around you, you have that confidence that you say, hey, we can make this happen. We can win that, that 10 games or even more each year and have a chance to be, you know, top 10 um, um, of the AP poll at the end of the year. But I tell you what, uh, we'll get back. We'll get back. We're trying. You know, we're trying. We're, yeah. we're, 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 we're bumping our heads here and there. But at the same time, I'm really excited about where we're going now and Sark and his coaching staff and what they have going on right now. I think we're, we're trending upwards, and we just got to gotta get more dogs. We got to get more players, uh, more recruiters in, which we are. You got a guy like Anthony Hill coming in. What's the advice that you share with him? Because people are saying already that's going to be the next DJ. That's going to be the next Novus, and obviously that's hard to do. Yeah, uh, well, you, you talk about Anthony Hill, a guy that I actually saw, shook his hand, saw his parents. So you say, man, you got a lot of upside. You got potential that's out this world, especially on defensive side of the ball. When you come in as a freshman, regardless of how potentially good you are, you have to learn the playbook. This is now. This is the old me talking now. Yeah. You yeah. know, you have to learn the playbook because that helps you for your abilities to show out there on the field. Your greatest season is when you decide to come back for your senior year. Jalen Ford has made that decision as well. And if there's any rem linebacker that reminds me at all of you, it's it's Ford a little bit because of what we were talking about earlier. Not just the tackles, but the ability to make the big plays. Do you see similarities in your game and Jalen's game? And what do you think is in store for him in his uh, final year? I do. I, I, I never want to uh, – um, uh, we'll talk about Jalen real quick, but Overshawn, I tell you what, oh. uh, you talk about oh. somebody that, that has some ability. That's, that's my guy. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I love that dude. That, that's rangy, yeah. that's tall, that's athletic, can go sideline to sideline, still take on blocks and make great plays. For him and Jalen to be stacked linebackers, I think they were a great complement for each other. Uh, now, talking about Jalen being able to come back for a senior year is, is so special. It's so, he, he needed to do that. Not saying he couldn't go to the NFL and, and have a great career. No, you talk about some similarities for me. It's probably having a knack for being around the ball. Mm -hmm. Having a knack for saying, man, here he goes again. He slipped in the backfield and he made a big play or balls up in the air. He's catching it. Why is he by the ball? Having that knack from being around the ball is a great trait to have, and we needed him to come back. Definitely needed him to come back because he's our staple to our defense. You had a sexy number. Does Jalen need more of a sexy <laughs> Because he almost doesn't look as good because he doesn't have that number. You know, that, I mean, that's kind of helping it. You know what? I you know, I don't know. You know, I've always been the, uh, uh, and I did wear 11. 11 is sexy. Yeah, 11, 11 is, yeah. 11 is the number, but I tell you what, Jalen, uh, it, it, for football players, especially young guys, you know, your, your play makes that number. I don't okay. care if it's 99. Okay. You can make it look good, you know, but but you have to play out there on the field. You, your focus needs to be out there on the field. But I tell you what, before he leaves here, 41 is going to be a number. You say, hey, okay, 41 just looks pretty good. Looks awesome. pretty good, yep. And then maybe one day we're having this conversation and introducing him as a college football Hall of Famer like we do with you, Derek Johnson. Congratulations. Thank you so much.